a question that the board could ask is, all right, you're telling me that there's only 1% chance that you could see a value lower than this number. My question to you is, if this extremely unlikely event were to occur, then what? Do we expect it to be here, be here, or what? So then you need a measure called a conditional VAR. So a conditional VAR tries to give you that answer. What if this happens? I know you're telling me it's unlikely, but let's say it has happened. Then what? Then the likely scenario in a market where you have such extreme positioning on one side is that if the market is here, then it will behave um, like a normal distribution. In fact, it will probably be even better behaved than a normal distribution. But if it ends up over here, then everybody will be scrambling in the same direction. So we know that a sell-off, sell-off below x, below x, will likely accelerate. And the distribution could look something like this. If market goes below x, then it's not going to stop near x. It's going to continue going down in an accelerated way with the expected value conditional on it having broken the var point at somewhere over here. This is the expected value of y. So if you're a hedge fund, you've got a position on that everybody else has a position on, and you're trading with banks on margin call, on collateral, you need to know how much margin you need to have, collateral you need to have on standby, if this gets broken. He could have a VAR number that says it's $10 million, and if... Um, he could take a 10% margin and say, well, I'm going to have $11 million of cash in the bank. And in the unlikely event that my position goes there, I'm going to post collateral of $11 million. It turns out that if it breaks, it drops, the market drops completely, and it's a margin call of $15 million. If he hadn't modeled the risk uh, to include the fact that there are these positions, then it is... Um, uh, he would not have had adequate collateral.